Okay, hello, good morning. Let me know in the chat if you can hear this okay. There seems to be a bit of a latency between my camera and me. <laughs> so I'm seeing my hand on the screen, but the live is not showing that. So maybe it'll catch up, but maybe it won't. And that's okay. I'll just keep an eye on the chat rather than on the video. Good morning, Louise. You're across the pond there, aren't you? Across the ditch. What time is it there? I think you're, are you behind or ahead of me? Is it even earlier for you? It's, um, it's early morning here. It's seven o'clock in the morning um, on the east coast of Australia here. And I'm used to getting up very early. I get up at five to go to work um, in my day job. And I have Wednesdays I work at home, so I'm able to do a bit more arting. And I thought it would be a good day to set up for doing a live stream in the morning when I'm most productive. However, at this time of the morning is also the really vocal bird noises time of the day. <laughs> and they're first up and... Um, oh, so it's nine o'clock there, so that's okay. Good morning, Catherine. Oh, Katharina, sorry. It's so lovely to, um, to see you both here. Yeah, I was just saying it's very loud bird-wise outside, so I apologise if they get a bit raucous. We've got a coel at the moment as well, which is a tropical bird that comes down. It's a cuckoo. Uh, it comes down from Papua and in Indonesia to breed. Um, so this time of year, October. October long weekend, our Labor Day weekend, is usually when they turn up, and, and they did. They did turn up. So Kev was out there before making his very loud call, um, but it's a bit quiet at the moment, so which is nice because it was very raucous before. If um, if they get a bit loud, I might... Um, I don't know what I'll do, actually. Good morning, Denise. It's lovely to have you here. Um, I have got the door closed at the moment, so if, if they settle down, I'll open it back up again, and then I can point out what birds are what if, um, if they're not all talking over the top of each other. But... All right, so I'll give it just a couple more minutes and then we can get started. I'm so excited and so nervous and it's all, you know, very exciting, very exciting. I had a bit of a major catastrophe just before. I tried this out yesterday using the webcam option and it seemed to work fine. But this morning, apparently, to do a scheduled stream, <laughs> I had to download an encoder. So at a quarter to seven, I'm furiously trying to figure out what to do. But it seems that we're there. So I'm a bit excited. Yes, it's Wednesday morning here. Hi, Nicola. Lovely to have you. I'm coming to you from the future. Well, Louise is coming even further from the future. <laughs> um, yeah, I know the whole time zone thing can, can sort of mess with your head a little bit, can't you? So we're kind of used to it down here, I guess, trying to figure out meetings. I used to work for a non-profit for a long time and um, I was constantly scheduling meetings with people all around the world at the same time so I got kind of used to trying to figure out um, where we sat in terms of everybody else. It's really really hard to get good time for both the sort of US and UK Europe area um, with Australian time. It's usually either really super early here or late at night in order to get both of them together so just as well, I'm a sparrow, I say. All right, well, shall we make a start? I think so. Um, so this is a, a barn owl from a um, from Pixabay, from a, a royalty-free website where you can get some fabulous pictures from, and I use them for all of my tutorials on Patreon. Um, and I did notice the day before yesterday that there's another coloured pencil artist who's also used this particular picture for one of her, her tutorials. So, um, But I figured, look, you can't have too many barn owls, can you? And we all do things a little bit differently, so I still think that this is an ideal one to start with. 
Um, I'm purposely speaking a little bit slower than I usually do <laughs> because <laughs> I know that, um, that the Australian accent can be a bit much sometimes for people who aren't used to hearing it. So please let me know if you think I'm talking too quick and I'll, I'll slow down a bit too. Um, so you should have your line art, you've got your reference picture. I've got the picture here on my iPad and I'm just going to be looking up at the live chat every now and then to answer any, anybody's questions as you go. Please don't hesitate to ask questions. Um, that's what this is for. I want to be able to chat with you and answer questions and, and get your feedback and all that sort of stuff. So yes, all right, sweet barn owl. So you've got your pencils list and you've got your outline and you've got your reference picture. I thought I might talk to you a little bit first about the different tools that I'll use. Um, and then talk to you about colour picking a little bit and then we'll just dive in and have some fun I think. I always feel like that the learning is in the doing um, and you learn a lot by mucking around and, and um, playing with your tools so I'm eager to get into that with you. Okay so a few things. I have my iPad that I use as my reference. I can actually put that above in a um, holder that I've got here so it's above where I'm working which is ideal. Um, I use a kneadable eraser, so this is my best friend. Um, I use a tool called a slice tool, which is a little ceramic blade, um, but you can use a scalpel as well, and that's excellent for getting some of these sort of fine detail feathers in. We probably won't be using that one today, but it's a good one to have on hand. And then I use a cheap makeup brush as a, a dust broom, so sometimes you get a bit of dust from the pencils or from your eraser. And that's good to sweep those off with that. I also use a Tombow Mono Zero eraser. Um, and it's it's a rubbery eraser, but it's nice and fine. You can get some really good details in there with it. I'll show you how I tape down my paper in a moment. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about colour picking. So I've given you the list of colours that I'm thinking we'll probably use. Um, and this is a, like a, a list in progress, I guess. So um, this is probably going to be a little bit blurry until I come down onto the the, um, uh, the picture underneath a little bit, I think. I'm just having a look if there's any other settings that I can change on here, but I don't think so. Um, anyway, so... When we come into uh, come a bit closer down, you should be able to see things a bit better. But these are the colours that I'm thinking that we might use, and these are colours that I have um, experience with. So that's why I'm choosing them because I kind of know what they look like um, down on the paper, and that's just something that comes with experience. You can create a colour key from your pencils. Oh, that's lorikeets. They're noisy little buggers. Um, you can create a colour key from your pencils. There's also a colour book by Karen Hull, and she's an Australian artist too, where she's um, done comparisons of different brands of pencils together. Hi Tria, lovely to see you. Um, or, see, or talk to you anyway, I can't see you, but yeah. Um, so it's incredibly useful. I might put a link to that uh, in the Patreon post, I think is probably uh, the best, and I'll put it underneath the the YouTube here too. I think it's an invaluable resource but you can certainly create your own as well so whatever brand of pencil that you use create a little color key and by color key I mean let me just pull my one of mine out so this is Karen Hull's book but um, I have actually colored in little squares with pencils that I have so that I can see exactly what it looks like when it's down on paper um, so that's useful to have as well. If you're not sure on a particular colour, sometimes it helps to hone in on, on that colour. And you can do that by using these sorts of uh, viewfinders. And this is just some grey paper that I have that um, I have cut little holes out of. Uh, and you can do all different sizes. Oops. Do all different sizes. And you can look through the viewfinder to see an exact colour. And then it's not influenced by any of the colours around it. So these can be incredibly invaluable to do um, really detailed areas if you want to focus in and sort of see what the shapes are without feeling overwhelmed. 
it's really good to colour pick out areas, you can use different size squares for different things. So that, that's a good tool to use as well. Um, there are also apps, I understand, that can help you choose pencils, but I've not had anything to do with them. So between using um, what pencils I know, having a few other pencils, having some scrap paper that I can have a little look at what it might look like down on, and just having a go, um, you'll end up creating something beautiful. The most important thing is that we all ha see colour differently and the colours I choose may not necessarily be exactly the same colours as what you're seeing. So where possible, I think that you should try and use the colours that you see. Um, and while it's lovely to have all sorts of pencils and I'm a big pencil hoarder myself, um, you can create most of the colours that you want by layering. And that's another skill to have. So, you know, don't feel like having only a few pencils is limiting. Rather, it's empowering because you can learn to layer on that. So, um, looking at this wig owl here, um, so there's lots of yellowy oranges, yellowy orangey browns in there. There's some pink in her beak. There's more of this yellowy orange around her eye. The eye um, itself has got some little reflective bits here. It's much more, um, the iris is much more visible on this side. And I'm going to use a little bit of blue in that um, iris here. You can keep it that, that sort of grey colour that's there. I'm going to use a bl like a blue-grey to make it stand out a bit more. Um, we've got some really dark brown. This is a, like a dark sepia. That's a galah that you can hear there. She's trying to tell me that I haven't put enough seed out, which is not true. Don't listen to her. Um, there's some more dark sepia and some greys here. This side of the face is actually quite cool in colour, so there's some cool greys here, and it's really warmed up over here. Okay, And then we've got some oranges and browns and whites, these brown flecks. Um, we see this as white, but it's actually full of so many different colours. Um, so it's really interesting as you start to work on these things, as you start to really deep dive into the colours that, it, that require are required to make up white. It's really quite amazing. It really is. Um, so I use primarily polychromos, well I use polychromos pencils for all of my tutorials um, because they're easily obtainable everywhere. They're relatively inexpensive and they're fantastic pencils. So if you're ever going to use, uh, look for a basic set to get, I would always recommend the polychromos. Prismacolor are also fantastic. The difference between the two is that the Prismacolor are wax based and the polychromos are, are oil based. The polychromos are a little bit harder so they tend to leave less dust, crumble less, but um, they're both fantastic uh, artist grade beginner um, friendly pencils. When it comes to the polychromos I cannot recommend enough getting all of the greys. So there's six greys in warm and six greys in cold and they're invaluable when it comes to wildlife or pet portraiture. Okay, so that's a little bit of start on that. I'm going to pop my iPad on the holder over here so that I can refer to that as we're going along. Okay. Now, under here, I've got my paper and my outline. So, hopefully... I mean, that's going to be very light to start off with because um, it's just an outline. I'm going to move my light over a little bit. Um, just trying to see if I can focus a bit better. Let me move this out of the way first, that would be helpful.
Okay, hopefully that's a little bit better. Um, so yeah, I've got my outline here. Um, I was going to show you how I tape down paper, wasn't I? Let me pull this back this way. Um, now, when you use tape to put your paper down, you want to make sure that it's acid free if you're going on the top of your page, which mostly we do, obviously. Um, but I discovered this from another artist, a pastel artist actually, on um, Instagram and she put the, a little bit of paper a little bit of tape sorry behind the paper there and I'm using like a uh, artist masking tape here um, and then a longer piece on the top onto the drawing board or the drawing surface without actually going on the top of the paper so magic that means that now uh, I don't run the risk of taking the paper off as I um, pull it off, which is I think is pretty spectacular. Okay, let me just see if I can get this. All right, let me know if you can see that. Okay, I feel like it's a bit wonky, but all right, technology. Oops. Okay, let's make a start. Let's get our pencils warmed up. Let's have something amazing fall out of them. I, um, I love this process. I love it. I'm just going to tape the bottom of my page down, which you can't see. Let me make that square for you. Okay, we're going to start on the eye because the eye is the best place to start. I love working from the eye onwards. I think that once I have um, a creature's eye down, I feel like they're participating in the drawing. I feel like they're egging me on or telling me I am using or not using the right colour and they do tell me that I'm not using the right colour, let me tell you. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like once we've got the eye down that they're sort of participating, that they're real, that they're, they're on the, the page with me. So I also have a piece of tracing paper, which I like to lay my hand on. So I don't want to be putting as my, the oils from my hand onto the page. The oils in your hand are extremely important. They're there for a reason to keep your skin supple and, and all that sort of stuff. But you don't want them on your paper. Um, so yeah, use a piece of paper. Use tra tracing paper or glassine paper is really good because it's slippery. So it doesn't tend to... Um, pick up any of the pencil underneath. Um, I am looking for a... So I keep all my pencils in a cup beside me. <laughs> the pencils that I pulled out that are to use for this. And I'm looking for my... Here it is here. My dark sepia. I like to start with dark sepia for eyes. Let's go. Oh, I'm so excited. I hope you're excited. Let me know if you're having any trouble with um, the video or the audio and I'll see what I can do about it. Um, okay, ready. Uh, duck sepia. What I'm going to do first is lightly outline. And speaking of lightly, I should probably just quickly talk about that for a minute. Um, pencil pressure. Light. So barely touching the paper using just really gravity this is medium so pressing a little bit harder but I'm not coming right down on the pencil pressing a little bit harder getting more pigment down um, with each stroke and then of course you've got very hard where you know you really need to come down on the pencil um, to get that sort of really dark pigment push down I don't tend to use this very much. Towards the end, when I'm doing some fine details, I'm mostly working between these two, so light and medium. And this allows you to, to use multiple layers over the top, and you can use multiple different colors, obviously, and build up the color that you've got there. Um, so but somewhere between there is what I would recommend to be using most of the time. 
All right, so I've got my nice sharp pencil and I'm going to basically outline just lightly the actual eyeball, the eye itself. So I am constantly going back to my reference and checking that. Now the line work is there as a support. It's not the be all to end all. Um, <clears throat> you may make lines as you're as you're making line art. You're looking at the picture differently than you would be than you are when you're actually drawing. So you may inadvertently make lines on the outside of a shadow, shadow area, on in the the middle of a shadow area, or the outside of a shadow area. So you. you th you tend to lack consistency when you're making line art as to where exactly the line is and we're not made of lines anyway but um, you should use them as a guide not as the be all to end all so I may have lines here that aren't exactly in the right position and I'll find that out as I go because I'm going to be referring to my reference constantly so okay so that's the eye ball itself and it's very dark down in here uh, and then we've got some beautiful reflective areas in here and I'm really looking into her eye now because you're, you're seeing a moment in time when this particular creature saw something I, I think that's amazing that's magical and there's usually a story of some sort going on in there and I really want to be able to capture that so um, so I can see I haven't got a line here for this ring of the iris here but I'm really diving into observing that now and I can see that that's there and I can go around the outside of this is the pupil area and I'm not I'm not going hard at the moment I am doing sort of light feathery strokes and I know that that's there and I know that there's a darkness in here as well and we're going to use some dark indigo for that one there's also some blue in here and then we've got some little flecks of white and it almost looks like birds like she's seeing other birds I don't know but let's pretend that that's the case that that's what she's seeing um, what you can do is draw around those and leave those white areas but sometimes that can look a bit contrived so what we're going to do is lay down some light color in here before I start to put any dark down and that way we can pull use the slice tool to pull back to the lighter color underneath Okay, now we've also got a lid, so I'm going to do the line of the lid in the dark as well. And there's a little bit of pink in that lid area. So at the moment I'm just mapping out what we're doing, what I'm looking at, what I want to work on. Now one thing I do want to point out is like any sort of painting you're going to go through multiple ugly stages when you do any sort of painting or drawing. Don't be discouraged by that just keep pushing through and you will come out the other side I promise. I'm just going to lay a light layer of dark sepia down. around this dark part here and it, this this part here is still very dark indeed too but I want to add a layer of blue there I'm going to work in light layers until we get exactly the, the tone that we want So I'm going to grab my indigo blue now 
And again, you don't have to use these exact colors, use whatever you've got on hand. Uh, I'm going to lay a light layer of that down around here. And I'm using kind of tiny little circular strokes. And then I'm going to grab not not white I'm going to grab cold gray one but if you've got white you haven't got a, a really light gray then go for white that's absolutely fine this one I'm going to lay down in this entire pupil area and I want to make sure that's a fairly good layer of that down And that's the base that we can pull back to. It will also help give us some of that reflective property that's, that um, the eyes have. Okay, that's looking... That's starting to look like an eye anyway, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to darken up now. I'll do another layer of the dark sepia. Still working really lightly. Now I'm going to do a light layer over the top of that blue. So gradually darkening. Now I've got my blue and I'm actually going to go over the top of all of that with the blue. You can see that there's a little bit of paper texture coming through and we're going to use another pencil to help eliminate some of that, make it look nice and smooth. Okay, getting there. I'm going to take uh, Oh, I have it in my hand. No wonder I can't find it. This is warm grey too and this is a bit of a magical pencil. It's excellent at blending without changing colour too much. Um, and I don't know if you can see, I'm hoping you can, but some of that paper texture is now eliminated as I push um, the pigment of the blue and the brown into the paper tooth. Whoops. Pressed a bit hard there. Into the paper tooth with this um, warm grey too. Magical. Okay, so that needs to go darker again still, particularly with the brown, but I want to look at what's going on inside the pupil now. And I'm going to use the, the dark blue again and a little bit of sky blue. Actually, we might do the sky blue first. So it's quite a bright blue up in this corner here. Now I think that it's, um, it's always worthwhile spending more time on the eye than pretty much anything else. That That is always going to be a focal point because it's what humans use um, as far as communication and understanding when it comes to other humans and also animals. We tend to look at their eyes to determine whether um, they're safe, whether um, we're safe with them, what their current mood is, what they're thinking, how they're feeling. So even if it's not an animal that we know particularly well, we understand eyes um, and when they look right, when they, they look correct, then everything else sort of falls into place. So I'm using dark indigo here. 
and it's over the top of the cold grey we put down initially. Now I want to get a bit of context what's going on around the eye. So I've got cinnamon here. I'm just going to lay a little layer of this down in this lidded area which will also want some other greys in as well. Can you see the difference that makes already? Um, so it really is, everything you do is contextual on what's around it. I'm going to do a really light layer of the pink on the reflective part of the pupil too. And we want a bit of um, grey as well, but it's like a warm pinky sort of grey in there. Um, so I'm going to take one grey three and just lightly go over that as well so it's not a bright white that's that's the other thing to learn with when it comes to reflections there is lighter much lighter areas in here which I'm calling birds which will scratch out um, but even those aren't bright white they're um, more of that sort of cold grey color Okay, so now we've got the structure down, we just need to darken everything up. So I'm going to come into this light blue bit a bit more because I've made that a little too large. I do want to come over this blue with the dark sepia as well. Um, which is right here and I'm going to darken up again these really dark areas and I'm not pressing really hard I'm um, still at a sort of mid medium light to medium sort of pressure the other thing that I'm doing with my pencil is I'm turning it fairly regularly too so I'm doing like little quarter turns and that helps to maintain the point on my pencil as well going to come in on the pupil over the top of this dark blue and darken that pupil up Think, I think we're getting there. It's looking like an eye to me. A bit more dark blue. Sometimes I just sit and look at it and try and determine what I need to do next. 
Uh, we may use a bit, little bit of black in there eventually, but I will come back to that using the thought of using black um, until we've gotten some more information down elsewhere. Um, what do I want? Hmm, I think I'm going to go... No, not that one. This is the curse of having too many pencils as well. Trying to, to, to decide what it is that you want to use. It's a really terrible curse to have, as you can imagine. Okay, I've got warm grey four, and I want to add just a light layer of that over this reflective area too, because it's not as light as what I have it there. That's better. Just knocked it back just a little bit. Okay, let's have a look at what's going on around the outside of the eye. And then we can get some more ideas about what we want to do inside the eye. I'm just going to take a sip of water. Rightio. Now. What I want is cold grey one. And in this, uh, uh, the line work that I've created here is to talk about, um, what line have I got there? That's a bit of an odd line. Whether I drag something across there. Um, is telling me about the, the darker sort of shadowy area that's in there. Um, it's not just the, the yellowy, orangey part. It's There's quite a deep shadow there. Uh, what I'm going to do is lay down some a, a base layer, basically, uh, of cold grey one. And I'm going to try and do that in the direction of um, the feathers so looking at my reference as to which way the feathers are going doing um, I'm actually kind of doing like a scribbly motion for this part as we get to doing more of the detailed feathers you want to do feathery sort of lines I hope that that's relatively clear it's a bit well, the, what I'm looking at is um, a bit out of focus, but I don't seem to be able to focus it any further, so hopefully it's not too blurry for you. I might have to have a play again and before before the next one. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm focusing on this sort of shadowy area. I'm coming outside of it, that's fine, because we're going to do a um, base layer all the way around. But particularly in this area, I want to go with cold grey one. Um, I don't remember if I spoke about this, but I have done the outline in uh, maybe cold grey one. Um, you, uh, you can use graphite, you can use whatever pencil you would like. With graphite, you may want to pull up bits of it as you go, so erase parts so that you haven't got graphite sitting underneath. Um, underneath your coloured pencil. I find that it's not a big deal. I think that you, you mostly cover it over. If you do it lightly, you mostly cover it over with um, the colours as you go anyway with graphite. Uh, graphite can be shiny, but again, it's you know layers usually that create the shine um, and darker blacker um, graphite, not lighter, that you would use for this. So, you you know, you, you can sort of practice um, with that and get your own idea of what works best for you. I have found if I choose a cold or a warm grey, depending on what my subject is for my outline, 
then I really don't usually have to worry too much about it at all. It gets absorbed in what I'm doing anyway, so... Um, yeah, so I think that that's probably a good thing to do too. If, um, if you find that it is too dark though, it is super easy to pull up. Just grab your kneadable eraser, drag it over it, or you can use um, your rubbery type erasers. I'm just working really lightly on there. You can see how much that's pulled up. Um, so it's not that you can't erase colored pencil. Don't think about that at all. Think of that at all. Okay. I think we've got a nice base layer down here. The thing with these layers is that you always think that they're going to be too dark when you first put them down uh, compared to the white or the off-white of your paper. But as you start to build layers, you see that you know this is nowhere near dark enough and you need to add more to it. Okay. Let's go in now with a little bit of the orangey yellow so that we can start to build out the colour around her eye. How's everyone going? Make sure to, to stretch your fingers out, shake your hand, do some hand stretches. Um, this is one of your most important tools, so make sure to keep it nice and limber. Don't hold your pencil too hard, and I think turning your pencil regularly helps to remind you not to hold it too hard. Keep your shoulders down, give them a bit of a shake out. Alrighty, now I want a yellow. What yellow shall I use? I think I'm actually going to use the green gold to start off with. But any sort of um, light or vibrant type yellow is a good thing. Um... That's really very light around the bottom here. Oh, you're going to all think I'm so crazy, but I get so excited <laughs> when I start to add things, colours down, and I can see how they're going to work with, with the rest of the picture. You know, I feel like she's looking at me. Isn't she beautiful? She's just so excited to come out and play. I'm just laying a really light layer of that around, constantly referring to my reference. Nothing too specific at the moment. And you know what, well, I have a feeling that you might be all just as crazy as I am and really enjoy doing this too. It, um, it never tires for me, I never get tired, or well, at this point anyway, of the magic behind doing what we're doing here. As I said, you know, we, we are looking at the eye of an animal at a particular point in time, or what she's seeing. And we're a little part of that. We get to, we're getting to be a little part of that. Uh, and then we're, we're honouring her or him, whatever sex they are, um, by studying them and creating art about them. And we're doing that, holding something that's made of wood with a, a, a core that's got colour, pigment suspended in clay and either wax or oil. And we're running it over a flat surface that was once a plant, it was once cotton, and we're making the magic. I think that that's just outstanding. I, um, how can you not be amazed by something like that? I think it's fabulous. <clears throat> okay, now we've got that little bit of yellow down, I can start to bring in some more darkness around her lid area. So I have cold grey six here, which is the darkest of the cold greys. And it's not black, it's remarkably not black, um, but it's nice deep dark colour. So 
where we put that cinnamon before the pink we're going around the outside of that again and it comes down very dark in here we can actually do a little bit of feathery out here we're going to have to spend a bit of time in there yet but let's bring a little bit of feathering out there um, and it's so dark that you can't even really see the lid in the middle there and continue up and around I'm being really really light Okay, and that looks a bit outliny, I know, but what we're going to do now is you'll notice that there's like, um, it's not scaly, but, well, it's like lumpy skin around the eye. So we've got this nice little base pink layer, but I want to sort of do these little lines that sort of encapsulate those little bumpy, lumpy areas. If you were to do this on a really large scale, you could get some fantastic detail. But just on this small scale, this is a good way to go. I'm not pressing hard, I'm pressing really lightly actually. I'm just doing little scribbly lines. It's really dark in here. And it's much more pink up here so we can leave a little bit more of the pink out and about and just do a few little lines in between. Just random areas. You don't have to be bogged down by detail. You can, um, well, my intention around doing these sorts of pieces is to do a realistic rendering, but it not, but not necessarily photorealistic or hyperrealistic. I want to portray what I'm observing and honor it um, without necessarily putting every feather in exactly the right spot. I want you to feel, I want the observer to feel like um, they know that this is an animal of whatever animal it is that I'm doing. Um, for me, it's all about the process itself. As I'm creating these things, I, I think about how feathers or fur might actually feel under my hand. When I'm doing something like a wing or a tail, I think about how it might feel for that animal to actually have that. Um, I, I want to feel, I, I want to not just visually observe and honor something, but I want to be able to represent it by thinking about how it would feel, how to both to the touch, but to other senses as well. That's just an, a dove. <laughs> I have lots of doves in the backyard. I have lots of doves that feel very safe in the backyard until the sparrowhawk comes to visit. And then I have one less dove. Okay. This is a really nice colour, this coal grey six. And I just darkened up some of the area that we had the dark sepia in. I might do a little bit over the top of the eye, the pupil as well. Okay. Alrighty, now let's look at getting a different... Uh, I think I'm going to go with a brown ochre, which I know seems quite dark. But I think it's going to work beautifully with the green gold to start put some of their depth 
in this um, these feathery areas down here are quite dark we need to add some dark sea here in there as well but they're a brownie sort of dirty dark And I'm doing these long sort of feathery strokes out. Yeah, so I'm using a webcam for this. Whereas when I record my tutorials, I use my DSLR, and it's so much clearer. I'm, um, I'm quite astounded actually. So hopefully it's still clear enough for you to work with. If not, I'm going to have to think of something else. I think because I want to do this regularly, I want to hang out with you guys and draw together. Sometimes it's um, a bit isolating when you're an artist, like you tend to work on your own. I mean, I like that too, don't get me wrong, but it's really nice to have a community of artists around you that you can hang out with. Even if I can't see you, I know you're there. I'm just having a bit of a wander around to see what is where. Ah, oh, that terrible sounding bird there is an Indian miner. It's a uh, import, it's a pest. And there's, they make the worst noises. It'd be one thing if it was a pretty sounding bird. But... Let's get some more of the dark sepia, good old dark sepia, and add these darker brownie sort of areas in. Just little light strokes. These tiny little feathers in here are more like hairs, aren't they? This area a little bit more, a bit of light shading. And there's not specifically dark hairs here, but there's a bit of shading, a darker shading. So I'm just going to lightly lay some areas down there and then back up here. Just referring back to the reference constantly. Oh, 
<laughs> you just had a sparrow hawk too, true. <laughs> Aren't they incredible creatures? What makes me laugh is, I mean, they're they're fairly large. They're, you know, they're a bit of prey, I guess. But um, the galahs, the the parrots that you could hear before, are at least the same size, maybe a little bit larger, as far as the body size of of the bird goes. So there's no way that the sparrow hawk is ever going to go after them. But because they've got that shape. That's more of those no noisy Indian miners. Because they've got that um, shape of a, a bird of prey, they all freak out. They all take off at a million miles an hour like this sparrowhawk is going to have anything to do with them, which just creates chaos. <laughs> and the deer doves, they're, they're not the smartest of creatures. Um, so some of them will poof off, take, <laughs> take off really quickly, run into windows, run into trees. Some of them just sit on the ground looking around like they're very confused as to what's going on. It's really quite a comedy of errors. Hi Ginny, I'm working on a harvest maze now but having, but definitely will also draw this wonderful creature next time. Oh, thank you for sharing it. My pleasure. Coloured pencil drawing does require a lot of patience. It does require patience. It's, um, it's like a meditative experience for me. I am um, I am so thankful that I have found my bliss, honestly. Um, I've tried a few, quite a few different mediums. I love graphite. If, if you've followed me for any length of time, you know that I'm a, a big graphite artist. But I have not done a lot of graphite since I really discovered what I could do with some colored pencils. And there's some fantastic colored pencil artists out there, so inspirational. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm just so thankful that I found what I have. I like painting. I like particularly like um, watercolor painting. But none of that has brought me as much joy as the working with colored pencils have. It allows me to stop and just be really present. And I think that that's such a gift because I have such a busy full time job as well. Um, and my mind is scattered and all over the place with that. You know, you know, um, I take multitasking to the next level sometimes. Um, and in this, I find that I've got cinnamon now. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of pink in, oh, in pink in amongst uh, the feathers here. And I find that this is such an opportunity for me to just sit quietly and be present. And being present is such a gift too, because we're constantly thinking about the next thing, what's next. Um, but sometimes we forget to, we forget that the only thing that we can actually influence is right now, is being right here. My breathing slows down, um, time disappears, if time goes so fast when I'm drawing. It's really a wonderful thing. Um, I have orange yellow here, I just want to pump up these colours a little bit here. a couple of spots where it's really quite yellowy orangey yellow but look at that we've got a little eye happening i get so excited <laughs> i've got this little owl looking out now let's talk to it and mind you when i'm by myself i do talk to them too so um okay i've got I seem to have an error here. I don't know what I can do, just saying that the streaming is poor. I think that our internet has been playing up a bit in this area. Yeah, so it's hopefully it will come back. I'll give it a few more minutes. I'm 
I'm not sure if you can hear me or not, so I'm going to type. And hopefully it'll come back. Oh, it seems to be connected again now, so, okay. Now, I know we're at an hour, but I'm happy to... Um, keep going for a bit longer if you guys would like to hang on stay around keep drawing for a while um, we'll get to a certain point on this one and then we can um, come back and do some more next week and yeah this will stay up on my YouTube channel I'm going to make sure that it's on my Patreon as well so and make it public um, but yes you can absolutely come back and watch it afterwards and I won't do anything more on her until next week when we can come back again. Does this time work okay for everybody? I am. Um, I'm actually going to do an hour earlier next week to see if that helps a bit more. Um, I can say though that there will probably be even more bird noises <laughs> at that time, so just be prepared. Um, but if that works for you all, then that works for me too. I just want to get a little bit more of this yellowy down. What we might do actually is um, just use this slice tool and add these little light dots in here. Uh, and then I can see if I want to darken it up a little bit more again as well. So I've got my slice and I'm literally just touching it to the paper. And can you see it's, it just took off um, that top layer of the darker color and it's come down to the lighter color underneath look at that magic i tell you so now those little reflections that were in her eye oh good i'm glad that time works okay And I love, I mean, I love drawing first thing in the morning. I, as I said, I get up early to go to work. I have to get up at five because I go to work. It takes me half an hour to drive there. I leave at um, seven, but I am desperate to get some sort of drawing in before I go. Um, so yeah, I'm used to working at this sort of time anyway. Um, oh, look at that. She's got some little birds in her eyes it's almost like stars isn't it I have now that I've put that in I am going to take black and just darken up underneath because I really want that to pop out a little bit over the side here this um, black is also excellent as a um, shading tool you don't have to press really hard it um, it's just a nice deep dark grey that's oh, I don't know it's not really cool it's not really a coal grey it's like it's own thing obviously really but um, it just is another tool it offers more depth so we're just going in lightly not pressing hard at all And just darken that little area up and look that made such a difference didn't it I just darken up around here as well sleep tight Nicola have a good sleep sweet dreams lots of owls in your dream So it's a good thing too to um, just sort of sit back and look at your drawing every now and then as well um, because we can get really 
deep in the minutia of what's going on up close and we may have missed something that can only be sort of picked up by sitting back a bit. Oh, I'm loving this eye. I'm just using the black as a shading, not, not pressing hard, not pressing down to make black lines. I'm just shading, putting a, a light, like a wash layer familiar with them um, painting over the top okay dark sepia again and I can see I need to darken up some of these little shadows in the skin this eyelid there shall we go next what I think we might do is expand out of this eye a little bit and come down and work on the beak for a bit so uh, there's actually this is cinnamon there's actually a, a faint shadow of cinnamon or pinky sort of coloring coming out up here very faint but once we start adding more colour around that way, it'll become part of that rainbow that creates the white. Then we've got quite, it's almost bluish down here. Um, and then you can start to see the beak through here. So I'm going over the top of that cold grey that I had there. And I better grab that again actually. The cold grey one. And I'm going to go over the beak area here. Now I may actually be a little dark. There's not really grey in the beak there. There's browns, yellows, a bit of blue. So I'm just going to lighten that line up just a little bit. Oops. Bringing the cold grey one into the beak again. Big area rather. And I'm using cold because this part here is bluey white. So I've got cinnamon again. Looking at my reference where the pink might be. And you know you sort of think at first glance a beak's going to be pink all over but it's not. It's really not. There's um, a section down here that's opaque it's not really any color it's I mean everything is a color obviously but it's kind of colorless it's um yellowy whitey like a fingernail I guess so a little bit of pink down there and then I've got this beige red which is a little bit lighter again glaze of yellow ochre 
It's a sort of an orangey yellow bit where the nostril is. And down towards the bottom of the beak here. Good old dark sepia again. Do you know, I don't think that I have done a drawing, a wildlife drawing that hasn't used a whole bunch of dark sepia. Oh, can you hear that little noise? That was a willy wag tail. My great grandfather used to say that he says sweet pretty creature. Who's a sweet pretty creature? Um, in New Zealand the fantail is very very similar. Um, I went to New Zealand oh, two years ago now. Uh, about this time of year, a bit earlier. Absolutely love it. Can't wait to go back. No doubt there'll be travel um, between us before there'll be travel anywhere else I might have to go over for another visit. I, went, I just went to the South Island but uh, I took my mum and dad. It was their first time overseas um, and I saw a fantail. I was so delighted. So delighted. They're such pretty, uh, sweet, well they're sweet pretty creatures. <laughs> they're such sweet little things. Okay, so we've got the basic for the beak down. What I want to get now is warm grey one. So I used cold grey up here, and now I'm going to use warm grey. To extend out a bit, because it's much warmer, the, the base layer there is much warmer in colour. And when I say warmer in colour, I mean it's got more of a a um, yellowy ready base so if you look at it and think of temperature it feels more golden more warm um, and these exist together so the cold gray can butt up against the well, cold colors can butt up against light uh, warm colors and vice versa and even right here just before it gets to this part here, it's really um, cold again. It's, there's a blue tone to it. It's a bit warm over this side. And then I'm going to grab a cold grey one and do up to here and again this line might be a bit dark so I might have to erase a bit of that because it's um, so light through here that the shadow although maybe not we'll see we'll see I love the fan tails too oh you have 10 acres oh I'm so jealous aren't they they're just adorable um, it looks like my internet's paying off again but I would love to have a bit of land I'm just on a suburban block here and it can get quite noisy um, as far as kids and dogs and stuff go <laughs> uh, so I'm sure my neighbors think I'm a bit noisy because of my birds but um, because I feed the wild birds um, but I would love a little piece of land that um, I could just wander around on and and I can see those little fantails doing exactly that. Are you on the north or the south island, Louise? I'm just laying a little bit of cold grey down. 
Oh good. It looks like the internet's settled down again too. I think because so many people are working from home now too, um, it tends to not be as good as it. Well, you know, there's a whole thing about we have MBN, but we've got one of the, the poorest uh, networks in the world as far as developed countries go, um, thanks to our current federal government who undid all the work of the previous federal government. So um, our internet can be a bit spotty. Oh, look at that. She's coming to life. I'm going to take a little bit of... What do I want? I think, yeah, I think I'm going to use burnt umber. And it's a, a yellowy sort of brown. And I think that that's going to work really nicely in here. In the northwest of Auckland. Wow. Oh, well, if I come over, I will definitely come up and say hello. Because I haven't seen the North Island at all. Um, just as a spectacular place. I, I feel like I'm, I should be living, I, I live on the central coast, which is, it's the coast, it's the water, um, it's the ocean. And I do love the ocean, but I belong to mountains. Um, and the mountains in the South Island, oh, just beautiful. It reminded me very much of Scotland. Um, when I went to Scotland in 2017, I felt like I'd come home. I've never experienced anything like it. And I've been to other mountainous areas. Um, I've done some trekking in South America and Peru uh, and in Nepal, um, which is absolutely spectacular. But nowhere felt like home like that. I just It was astounding to me as soon as I got there. Not that it's full of mountains, mind you. Uh, Scotland, there are some mountains around, but um, but my I have heritage on my mum's side that it's Norwegian, and seeing those mountains in the South Island was just yeah it felt like coming home too. I found it absolutely amazing. I um, would very easily move there. It wouldn't take much convincing. Let's put it that way. How are we going? How's everybody feeling? I've got a little bit of burnt ochre here. I want to add a bit of this sort of de deeper orange in. In this sort of shadowy area of the beak as it's coming underneath. Some of the feathers there. You can see that I work really lightly and just build up colour. Um, so yeah, it does take a while, but uh, I enjoy the process. I enjoy um, spending time with it. There's, it's not quite the same sort of instant gratification as you can get through some sort of paintings, um, although you can spend so much time on those as well, obviously. Um, and for some of my uh, fantasy work, more fantasy related work, I will do watercolour as an underpainting and things move a lot quicker when you do that, which is really lovely too. It's a whole, whole other thing. But yeah, I, I really enjoy this process of sitting quietly and building layers up. It is a special place. I'm sorry your son's not well. Um, I've got a little bit of, well I haven't got a little bit, I've got a whole pencil of warm grey too here now and I'm using that as again that sort of burnishing again, I'm pulling the colours together and just creating a little bit more depth and darkness around this here. 
And I think I'm actually going to go up one again. So I've got one grey three. Just at the top of this beak area here. Yeah, we stayed for a week. Um, I did Airbnb because I wanted mum, this is in New Zealand, sorry, because I wanted mum and dad to really enjoy um, the travel and not feel too overwhelmed but by going to a million places at once, which is why I just chose the South Island as well, hired a car and drove around. And we stayed at, oh, I think, what, four, four or maybe five places just airbnb and stayed for you know like four or five nights we stayed for a whole week down at tier now oh my god it's just so beautiful <laughs> we did one day on milford sound and one on now i'm not going to be able to think of the name of the other sound that we went on a cruise to oh spectacular just amazing Mum and Dad felt the same too. The only thing that for Dad is that he doesn't like the cold too much. Whereas Mum and I love the cold. Alright. Well, I think this is probably a good place to stop. Uh, what have I got there? One grey. Um, and I think what we'll do next week is come back and yes that will sound that was it amazing two very different cruises we did uh, one was a beautiful sunny day and the other one was misty and um, drizzly and oh, it was just spectacular both uh, and to see both of them was spectacular the the um, misty drizzly day the the waterfalls were just incredible um, yeah, I mean, what a terrible job those people on the boats have, <laughs> right? Seeing all that every day. Oh, my goodness. Um, I have a little bit of brown ochre. I'm just doing the sort of yellowy reflective shadow underneath there. Yeah, I think that this is probably a good spot to stop because we have an eye and she's, she's here with us now. She's participating. What we're going to do next week is finish off um, this part of her face here and instead of going over onto this eye here I'm going to start working on the feathers up here. What I tend to do is do one eye or sometimes both eyes but usually one eye first and, and the, the information around it and then because I'm right handed I'll work from the top left down so I'm less likely to drag over the top of stuff. Um, yeah so that's what we'll do next week. I am um, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. I really, really enjoyed it. And I think that I got the technology right. So we'll soon see if I go to um, upload it. That doesn't work. <laughs> I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm so appreciative of you guys being here, taking some time to sit with me and do some scribbling. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you've done. Um, so you know tag me if you have Instagram or Facebook and you you want to share it that way if you don't you can always email me um, I'm more than happy for you to email me or DM me or message me whatever works for you um, I'd love to see your wee creature I just think that it's so much magic having all of these little creations done at the same time around the world together I mean that's magic right what else could it be I think it's just fantastic so yeah thank you so much um, it was really lovely and go create some more magic have an excellent evening or excellent day and I'll see you next week bye
That's <laughs> lovely to keep you taking notes. Thank you, Katharina. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all make. 